The World Meteorological Organization says the Middle East region is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. Records have been shattered in recent years. Kuwait recorded temperatures of over 53 degrees Celsius in 2016, and a year later, Iran recorded 54 degrees Celsius. Well, Max Dilly is the director of climate at the WMO, and he joins us now from Glasgow, where the COP summit is taking place. Thank you very much. Uh, for being with us. So um, some pretty scary forecasts when it comes to temperatures. Just how hot could it get over the next two decades? Well, it depends on the successive efforts to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which is what's causing the warming. If um, the efforts that are being negotiated here in Glasgow are successful and emissions begin to decline, we will have a much slower rate of warming than we will if the emissions continue to increase at the rates that they currently are. At current rates of emissions um, in the later in this century, we could see temperatures of up to three degrees uh, higher than pre-industrial levels, which would be um, well past the two degrees which the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has deemed as being the last sort of safe threshold before we get into uncharted territory. And uh, we'll get to the pledges that have been made at the summit in just a moment, but I want, I want to ask you about what these higher temperatures mean in terms of extreme events. I'm talking about hurricanes, floods, forest fires, that kind of thing that we do seem to be seeing more and more of. Is there a direct link between those catastrophes and warmer temperatures? As you said, in uh, 2021 to date, the global mean temperature has been 1.09 degrees above pre-industrial levels. But that doesn't mean that the temperature everywhere on the Earth's surface was that average um, amount of increase. In fact, uh, in some parts of the world, and particularly over the land surfaces, the, the temperature has warmed considerably higher. What about the Middle East? In Kuwait, uh, a few years ago, we saw temperatures of 53 degrees Celsius. I mean, surely these places will become uninhabitable at a certain point in time. Yeah, that was the warmest uh, record in Asia um, to date. And uh, it is a foreshadowing of things to come because uh, the heat waves on top of a warming trend are obviously going to be hotter than they would have been otherwise had it not been for the warming. And it, it's not only temperatures, um, the um, Arabian Peninsula uh, had very dry uh, anomalies in 2020, which is the last year for which we have a, a full year of data. And yet in Yemen, there was very heavy rainfall and uh, at the end of 2019, and that triggered a massive outbreak of desert locusts that then led to very serious levels of malnutrition and food insecurity. So we, we can see in the precipitation how the, the warming accelerates the hydrological cycle and it can lead to extremes on both the wet and, and dry ends of the scale. All right, so that's the bad news. Uh, let's talk about what's being done about it at the summit where you are right now. Um, the UN uh, say, uh, UN officials say they're encouraged by some of the progress they've seen so far. What do you make of the pledges that have been made? Because uh, the UN says if they are all honoured, we can limit temperature rises to 1.8 degrees Celsius. Is that good news for you? Well, that, um, <laughs> as you said, if they are honoured, uh, and that calculation is correct, that would be good news indeed. The um, previous pledges have been analyzed extensively and have been shown that they would not be sufficient to keep the temperature um, within the 1.5 to 2 degree range that the Paris Agreement seeks. So if um, we're starting to see pledges and the uh, follow through on those pledges, at levels that would keep the temperature to 1.8 degrees, that would be very significant progress versus what we've seen previously. Max Dilly, thank you very much. Pleasure.